what privilege it is to know that you have been chosen by God. What is important for us to know who has chosen us? Not human beings, not some angels. God, the creator of heaven and earth, he has chosen you and me to be his instrument, to be his visible evidence of the invisible God. I have chosen you, Jesus said. I have chosen you. God who became man, can you imagine? He came all the way from heaven on earth and he says, I have chosen you. Not only that, God became man and he's saying, I've chosen you to be my friend. And he says, I've come to give you life and life in abundance. Why does he do all these three things? Simply because you and I, we can be an instrument in the hands of God, a vessel that has been molded by the potter himself. You are a vessel of increasing glory. You are a vessel where God wants to empower you with His presence and power. He's chosen you to be a visible evidence of the invisible God. When you look at yourself, you look yourself as weak. You look yourself as limited. There's a guy called Gideon in the Bible, in the book of Judges chapter 6. For seven years there was bondage. For seven years was locked down. For seven years there was no glory, glory, glory. There was another story of agony and pain and rejection. Gideon cried out to God and God said to Gideon, Gideon, I have chosen you. Gideon was knowing chosen, but he was frozen. Why was he frozen? Full of fear, full of timidity. God is saying, you mighty man of valor. But Gideon is saying, I'm the poor, I'm the weakest. He was not listening to God. It was his voice was louder than the voice of God. God speaks to you in whispers, but our pain has a bigger voice. And we begin to hear our own voice. His own voice was saying, hey, if God really loved you, how come seven years, no food, seven years of captivity, seven years of fear, seven years of bondages, he could see. That means Gideon was living according to his senses, natural senses. What are our natural senses? What you see, what you feel, what you taste, what you hear what you can feel. Those five senses, you operate your faith on the basis of five senses. He was calling on God, he was crying unto God, but when angel came to answer his call, he's not able to understand. He's not able to hear the whispers of God. God is saying, hey Gideon, you are a mighty man. I've chosen you, but this guy was frozen. Maybe today, that's your story. It doesn't matter. What matters is you got to learn and make a decision you live outside your box of your natural thinking, natural feeling, natural what you see. You got to come out. That is why faith is given as a gift to replace your senses. Gideon was walking in his senses and what he saw, what he felt, what he heard, what he could feel, what he could see. But listen carefully. God is saying, hey Gideon, in the midst of seven years, it doesn't matter. But I want to let you know today, I have chosen you. You feel your weakest. You think you're poorest. But God is saying, you are strong. You and I today, we got to renew our mind. We got to think as the way God thinks. We got to believe what God says about us. God is saying to Gideon, be strong. I am with you. You and I today, we got to learn to walk in the renewal of our mind. We are the visible evidence of the invisible God. God has chosen us. This choice is not by man. This choice is not your choice. It is God who's chosen. He came from heaven. He called you friend. He has chosen you. He gave you his life abundantly. So you got to learn to be willing to be foolish enough to say, I will not believe my feelings. I will not believe my happening. I want to believe God. I'm willing to see the purposes of God in my life. You got to learn to exercise faith beyond your natural feeling. Gideon said, be strong. I'm with you. So he began to renew his mind. And what happened? When you renew your mind, that means you begin to rehearse what God speaks about you. What is God saying to you? Call on me. I will answer thee, show you great and mighty things. What does God say to you? My blessing will make you rich and add no toil. You got to make a decision to hear the whispers of God. Learn the whispers of the saint. Be still and know that he is God. You got to learn to walk into that promises of God, which are yes and amen. Holy Spirit has renewed your mind. How does our mind be renewed? When you spend time with God alone, when you read the word of God. How is your mind renewed? 
when you begin to rehearse God's word, you repeat God's word. How is your mind renewed when you begin to declare your word upon your circumstances? When you begin to declare what God says about you. My prayer today, no matter what is your challenge, I will tell you today, the world around you is frozen. The world around you is absolutely like weary, exhausted. But I have a plan. The Lord is saying, a plan to make you, not to break you, to give you open future. Why? Because He's chosen you. He came down from heaven only for you. You are so unique. You are so special. You are His treasured possession. God calls you out of darkness into His marvelous light. My prayer today, you make that decision to say, God, forgive me. Come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I thank you that I am the chosen one. I thank you that you call me to be your friend. I thank you that you give me life and life more abundantly. Gideon became a visible influence of the invisible God. Noah, Abraham, David, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, all of them were in their own ways limited. But when God comes in, they became unlimited, empowered by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at Joseph. Look at Jesus. Look at Peter. Look at Paul. Look at Mary Magdalene. All of them became worshippers of God. Why? Because God picked them up from their challenges of frozenness, their challenges of weakness. God brings a breakthrough into their lives. My prayer today, as you hear this word, know this, you're chosen. Know this, you're special. Know this, God calls you his friend. Embrace his friendship. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your blessing upon everyone who's watching us today. That Lord will embrace the choice that you have given us to embrace your Lordship. You have chosen us that we may have life and life more abundantly. We embrace your Lordship. Forgive us, Lord. Come into our heart. We believe you died for us. You rose again. You're alive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.